Hey folks, E.T. here, coming at you with the next part of our new crash course, and this is our options market dashboard. This is the place you are going to spend most of your time. A lot of important information here. Some very easy, quick links up here to bring you to the different places that you are looking. There are some things that, like sectors that we see on other pages, but for now, we're just going to walk through this. There's a lot on this page to cover, so we're going to take our time here and not go too fast. Make sure everybody sees everything nice and easy, nice and slow. First thing, if you want to find it, go to your market dashboard, click options. Very simple. There you go. All right. There we are. We are here. And what we see now is market net flow, or as we've so lovingly dubbed it, MNF. Some important things to do. There are quite a few settings, and I'll, we can go through those. But what we're also going to talk about is just the easiest, smooth brain, simple way to go through. First off is your time frame continuity, your TFC. We tweet about it all the time. TFC means all of your different time frames match, all right? It means all your different market net flow DTEs match. And when we see TFC, we see a trend day. Now, when market's closed, you will see gray, okay? When the market's closed, you will see gray. When the market opens, if you see gray, that means that not all DTEs match, okay? So you might have a few bullish ones, a few bearish ones. You'll see those on flow line, which we'll click on here in a sec just to check so you can see those. But plain and simple, if it's green, all of your DTEs match bullish. If it's red, all of them match bearish. And if it's gray, not all of them match settings. You can just go through and look at which each one does. Sound alerts, GEX levels, SR levels, momentum, and convergence. I will say, it, turning on GEX and SR levels will scrunch the chart a little bit and won't make it quite as clean looking. So I like to leave those off of there and just use my chart on TradingView to see what those levels look like as we go along. Momentum is one of our indicators that we use. Most important, though, and I'm going to tell you what the power users use, what everybody usually likes to keep on is convergence. Convergence is our gray bars down here, our green bars down here, our red bars down here. All right. Now, plain and simple, convergence is our strength of move. So when we see big green bars up, all right, what we're looking at is, a, is more of a bullish move upwards. And as they wane, we sometimes see pullbacks, contrary moves if we're bullish, or bounces if we have bearish net flow. So your, your green line is going to be your call line. Your red line is going to be your put line. White line is your price. Remember that net flow, this is important, does not contain the indices. All right, there are no indices in net flow. This is the overall call and put volume for the market, not the indices though. Indices, since they're vehicles for hedging, won't be in here and we don't want them. It's been back tested that putting them in is not as strong as what we see here. But most importantly, this is what a majority of our users are always using. These settings right here all just default that when you open the page, that's what they come to with convergence on. Plain and simple, when you have big red bars going up, your price is likely going down. OK, and your and your flow is going to match. You're probably going to see calls over puts when you see big, big green bars going up and you have puts over calls. Then you're probably going to see an uptrend there. And when we go gray, we have contrary moves. And you can see we saw the waning. We see the gray. We see the dip. A good thing to point out here when you start to see it waning down like this, if you are long in this situation, with a bullish net flow, this is when I start to exit my longs. It's generally going to match up very well with a dark pool or a gamma level that we've pulled from our other parts of the platform that'll be on your chart. So when you have those levels on, and we'll take a look at some of those as we go along, but plain and simple, when you when I start to see this wane, I will exit a position. If it's very, very, very red and we're going down and I start to see the red bar shrink, I will definitely exit my shorts, especially if we're approaching a level. All right, if we're approaching a dark pool or a gamma level, then we know that we don't want to necessarily stay in that position, that we might see a contrary move. There are days that we will see gray all day, and those days end up being chop days, not even close to a trend. There are smaller moves, less moves, and there's just not as much action going along there. All right, I know I, know I said this video would be a little bit longer. just want to point out, a couple things up top here. So when we see this, this, this is basically letting us know how many calls and puts there are and what net flow is giving us. Another one is our intraday price target showing us what our biggest gamma pull is when it comes down to change. And we're going to look at that next and then gives us our sentiment for the next week. All right. So we're going to move down to our zero day information here. Now, first off, our zero day flow. 
We have multiple different ones we can look at. We have filters that we can do to check to see, check to see different times. All right, we can check the history of the different times as well. We can view SPY, SPX, or QQQ. I want to point out here, this is pretty important as we're looking along. The color of these circles isn't necessarily important. What we're looking for is large circles to signify trend changes, okay? So a large circle is going to give us a trend change. Large amount of frequent circles will also generally give us a trend change. As you can see here, we saw a bunch of of circles right down here we got a nice trend up as we went along all right pretty simple to look at what you're looking for what you're looking for is the actual frequency and size as opposed to what color they are just kind of put an x on the color we'll see how that goes now zero day gex this is a day trader's dream this is exactly what you're looking for as a day trader i'm going to go through the different chart types and what's important and what to look at for intraday. So by strike is our aggregate, okay? These are our largest levels and I'm gonna point out, this is very important, red levels attract, green levels repel price. All right, so as we're going along, price matters on a repel, a repel level. If we're above and it stays above, it can repel upwards. If it can't seem to consolidate above, it can repel downwards. And as you can see here, when we're looking at the aggregate, we see 522 is way up there, but we didn't get to 522. And here's why. Our next one that we're going to look at is change. Change is showing us what is changing right now as we speak, right? This updates frequently, updates constantly. So what we're seeing now is the biggest pull to end the day on Friday was 517. We obviously did not get up high on Friday to close the day. So what these are, what change does, is these change all the time they they literally fluctuate very frequently to show you what is being bought as or, or, or what is what is being attracted to price and what is repelling price the most as we go along and when you see these these are going to line up really well with gamma levels and dark pool levels that you've, that you've drawn on your chart even though these aren't dark pools and this is options here you're going to see that it lines up pretty well as we approach let's say we have a somewhat bearish net flow and we're approaching 519 which is a repel level and we and, and we start to see 517 pulling and 519 happen also happens to be right around a dark pool that's a good spot to maybe look short as 517 is pulling down i will add the first 30 minutes of every day i let there's a lot of positioning going on and so i let this zero day gamma kind of iron itself out before executing trades based on it everybody's a little different some people like to play those orbs some people like to get in immediately i always like to give it 30 minutes to digest the open and from there i jump in just a little bit as we go along just kind of wait to see what net flow and zero day are saying it's very good to tie them together all right to look towards okay we're bearish we have a bearish net flow our convergence is starting to turn red we're approaching we're we're approaching a, a repel level and a lower levels pulling in this case here we were bullish as we were going along it was the end of the day the last 10 minutes are always data is always a bit mixed things get a little bit crazy but throughout the day you we would we would generally see uh, if we're going to pull down from here, either a gray convergence on a bullish net flow or a red convergence if puts were over calls up here on net flow and then that pull back to 517. In fact, we saw this multiple times throughout the day on Friday where every time we ripped a little bit, we dipped a little bit and we would see these lower levels just continue to pull every time we price got above. Price, price had a nice rise on Friday. Very simple to look at. All right. Our market decks. This is, this is really something that's used for swing trading, and it's mainly used by me if we have consistent bars as we go along. So red, some people like to buy when they see red before close to short the next day and then close out and close out that day. I like to use them for, for what is happening per, potentially that day as well. So when you see a green bar, a lot of times you'll probably start to see a rise in price. One thing to point out that as you can see see here, when you start to see consistent bars, all of the same color, that's sort of a, your swing your swing area where you can continue to hold your longs from when they flip. All right, same thing. If there's a bunch of red bars consistently, you can hold your shorts for a swing for a swing play there. Not a, not as many people use it uh, that 
that way, but that is one of the ways that it can be it is designed to be used is to just kind of stay long or stay short when they go back and forth like this. These are when you start to see your range areas and I pay a little bit less attention until we start to see a more of a continual trend as we go along. All right, I know I'm getting long winded here, but don't worry. We're going to keep on going. Flow map. Very simple. Everything to the left of the zero line is sold. Everything to the right of the zero line is bought. All right. So we're looking at Friday here. We see calls bought, puts sold. That's bullish. If you don't know, calls being bought is bullish. Puts being sold is also bullish. But as we look along here, for the, some of these DTEs further out, you do see puts being bought and calls being sold, which is bearish. Very mixed here. Very light calls here. Nothing too heavy. When you see mixed bars like this. These will sort themselves out as we go along. Can be some hedging as well. But one of the things we want to we want to look at with flow map is if flow map matches net flow very well, i.e., if we have a very bullish day going on, all right, and net flow is very bullish, you want to see flow map be bullish too. You either want to see puts being sold and calls being bought, or just a bunch of calls being bought and not a lot of put flow. All right, to make sense there with that, very very simple. Left is sold, right is bought, green is bullish, red is bearish. There we go. All right, flow timeline. Just a timeline of how heavy flow is as we go along. You can remove days. You could pretty simple there. You just want to see if flow is going up or down, right? So we've seen a lot, a lot for four or five going down makes sense there, right? Negative flow going down. And what did we see? We saw a downtrend week for the most part there for sure. And you can go equities or index as you can go along there. So 419 was, was pretty low there. Everything else here is pretty flat. So I like to view equities the most because equities since the indices are vehicles for hedging, I like equities the best to see where flow, what weeks look heavier, short, or heavier, long. All right, dealer's diary. Try to simplify this as much as I can for you. Not too confusing. Everything, any big green bar to the right of zero means dealers need to sell to get even. All right, very simple. Any red bar to the left of zero means dealers need to buy it, get even. This is important. It works best on Fridays and it works best on OPEX days. So you don't necessarily want to continue looking at this daily every single day. You want to see what it looks like on your Fridays to get those skewed bars. All right. So on this Friday here on 4-5, there, was, there wasn't a lot of red over here and dealers were selling a little bit all day long. Every time we popped, we dropped. A lot of times these, these plays will happen in the last five to 10 minutes of the market close as well. So keep that in mind. But also keep in mind, Fridays and OPEX are your best days to take a look at that. All right, going into some other stuff that's pretty simple to look at. Top flow and largest flow trades. Plain and simple, what folks are very long on or just a little bit long on and what they are more short on. Very easy to see. Tesla did not have a good day. Had a ton of put premiums going that direction. Same thing over here. Just where your biggest where your biggest trades were for put and call flow. Remember to not necessarily take a look at the indices as they are vehicles for hedging. I like to point that all point point that out multiple times in all the videos that I look at all the flow that isn't the indices flow as that can be considered confusing as to what it is. Then plain and simple there. Plain and simple next call chains and put chains. Right, call chains are chains that are being bought with a ton of volume on our calls, and put chains are ton of volume being bought for our puts. Once again, what do we ignore here, folks? We don't look at the flow for the indices necessarily. In a vacuum, looking at indices flow can be very confusing. There's so much hedging going on that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go that direction. Instead, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for individual tickers, and we'll talk about a lot of ways to look at individual tickers in other videos in the crash course. You can get a better idea as to how to do that. But this is this is your starting point here for your calls and your puts. Just taking a nice look. All right. Very simple. Options contract ideas. Very, very, very simple. Your highest call and your highest put volume change. What's seeing the most call flow? What's seeing the most put flow? Amazon had a pretty good day on Friday. Every time it dipped, it ripped. Ton of call flow. Tesla did not have a good day on Friday. It continued it, it, every time it ripped, it dipped. Uh, so we had a we had a dip and rip with call flow and a, a rip and dip anytime Tesla saw a green candle. Good, good thing we saw Zom there, right? 
Energy is doing very well. So it, we, in very, very, very simple to look at. Not a difficult bar chart. Nothing confusing here. Just showing you your, your highest volume changes. All right, high volume cheaplies. These are your diamonds in the rough. These are things that you're that you're looking for that are cheap, that are usually fairly fairly out of the money because they're cheap, but they're seeing quite a bit of volume. Uh, for indices, I generally still do ignore. All right, I don't pay attention to them. I'll keep repeating that. When we start to see other things, I'll take a look. You know, twenty thousand volume on EWZ. That's probably a lot in comparison and then weirdly we have we have a silver over here in the puts area and then we have some calls rolling through on it as well so one of those ones might put an x on it it could be just hedging both ways depending on waiting on news or something or something that's going along all right so high volume cheaplies high volume leaps over here sorry are are your further out contracts got kind of combined those two together for a second there High volume leaps are things that are further out, as you can see, 2025s here that are seeing a lot of volume. So somebody's short term, short silver, but long term, long silver. So interesting look there for that on for, for sure. All right, your most out of the money strikes and your large out of the money OI. Plain and simple, these are they get a score. The higher the score, the further out of the money they are. Very simple to look at. And this is just high volume things that are out of the money. One thing that I'm going to point out again, I'm going to put an X on these indices ones and not look, but I will check out things like PLTR and AAL when it comes to those strikes. And then large out of the money OI, sort of the same thing a little bit. This is just out of the money OI that's getting a lot of hits, your open interest as opposed to strikes, all right? So if you start to find something that's in here and in here, then maybe, and they're both going the same direction as you scroll through the pages, perhaps you are looking at something that might be a feasible, actionable play as you go along. All right, moving on down to weekly sector inflow. Very simple, what is going on this week with shorts and longs with the sectors, all right? Not difficult to understand. Green, green is bullish, red is bearish. So we're seeing in technology last week, we had more bearish than bullish flow. Sector flow, the better view of sector flow is on our stocks dashboard page, which was in the first video, which is right here. Okay, you scroll down there, you can see that. You can remove things and you can see what's going up and what's going down. But plain and simple, your sector flow is what is seeing the most positive flow and what is seeing less positive or negative flow. So as you can see here, industrials, your, your, your blue line is going way down. It's not seeing very positive flow, but you are seeing energy go up and you're seeing real estate go up. So those might be some interesting things to take a look at as you go along, as energy has continued to rise when we've seen, which a lot of times happens during the uh, downtrend weeks like we had last, last week. Sector flow premiums, same thing here as we go along. All right, pretty simple. What? How many premiums we're seeing in our sectors? Positive. This is bullish. This is flow leaving. Right. This is so. This is bearish as we go along. Very, very intuitive. Nothing confusing here. Here, green is bullish. Red is bearish. All right, we're almost done. Thank you for bearing with me. Just trying to take my time to go through this. This is your call market and your put market dashboard once again. I'm going to ignore the indices, but I am going to look to see if I see certain things. This SLV is a confusing play because it's long and short there. But if I start to see things here, right? If I'm looking at calls market dashboard, and then I'm seeing, and then I'm seeing a bunch of a bunch of OTM strikes on it, or OTM OI on it, or even if I'm seeing it in the cheaplies or the leaps, I'm going to take a little bit of a look at that. I'm going to dig further into that play, and we'll talk about digging further into those plays in other videos as we go along. Apologize that we let this one go so long, but that is all for now. Everybody have a good day and stay safe out there.